All right, here we go, guys. What's up, everyone? This is Jose Trujillo, and you're about to see a live. Well, not if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, you're not seeing it live. But it's pretty cool. Too. It's a pretty cool deal. Either way. All right. How's it going, Oja? How's it going? All right, here we go. Um, let's make this happen. I'm going to make some uh, pretty little flowers. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And uh, the ones that are... The ones that are... Uh, learning you don't need to take notes all you really got to do is just watch okay there's no uh, there's no note taking required <laughs> no taking <laughs> there we go I just read a really nice quote right now and I'm going to share with you guys. Someone share with me on Facebook. And the quote said. Um, uh, what did the quote say? I have to remember what the quote said. May, may my work flow out like a river. Not, not forcing anything. But also not holding back. I really like that. Um. It's very common for an artist to have ideas about our artwork. Even if you're doing this uh, for a while now, full-time or not, it's very common to have ideas. I, I really believe that they come out of lack. And, and many artists experience lack. Um, Either I'm not good enough, or my artwork's not good enough, or, or whatever. Um, I think a lot of that happens for a couple of reasons, but I think the main one is that there's no, uh, there's no commitment to the work. There's no commitment to the work. So when there's no commitment to the work you kind of show up every now and then or even if you show up every day you you, you don't show up with intensity meaning uh you don't give it all right you 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 kind of just you kind of just semi show up so that creates a lot of conflict in the artist's mind It makes you want to uh, it makes you want to push harder force things right it makes you want to force things or it makes you hold back and I, I, I believe it's because the the river is not the river is not flowing yet and one one way to get that river flowing I, I really don't know any other way I I have all kinds of tricks for it, but I there's only one way that I found out to be truly successful with it, and that is if you've been painting for a long enough period of time in the same day, you'll start getting into that. Um, just painting, not you don't have to be painting in any particular way. Just painting for a, for a few hours. This is what Picasso said. I believe in inspiration, but it has to find you working, right? It has to find you working. And although the, the, you'll get tricked, the mind will trick you into thinking that that's not it, that it's something else. But after you're doing it for a little while, you're going to start noticing something. There's less and less resistance. You know, there's going to be less and less resistance after you do it for a while. There's going to be less and less resistance until you drop the resistance. What you're really doing is you're dropping the resistance. That's really what's happening. But the resistance doesn't get dropped usually. 
um, because you you make a couple of I don't know brush strokes or a couple or you paint for a couple of hours you're you're usually not gonna drop the resistance that way I hate to say it. the resistance is a the resistance is a it's a very real fugly thing um, most artists I think all artists experience it and most artists are confused when it comes to it and the reason why why most artists are confused is not because there's something not because we're not smart enough or or, or you know Zen enough or maybe maybe Zen enough I don't know the reason why it's because it's confusing because the resistance is all thinking it's about thinking. And so any anything that you try to do to abolish the resistance doesn't work. Because the resistance is all about thinking. So the moment you start working, painting, you're gonna be like, no, that's not it. I shouldn't do that because that's not really what it is. What I need to do is I need to work harder or I need to work far faster or I need to take my time and and come back to the painting and 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 so so you keep doing this 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 is what i've experienced in my career you keep doing this you either do this you work 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 and then you stop and then you work 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 and then you stop and then you work 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 and stop and you keep doing this so this right here you're breaking every time and it's creating your resistance okay Here's another thing that, that, that most artists do too, is that they work really hard and then they stop, right? You work really hard. Maybe, maybe one day you work really hard or whatever, you stop. And then you work really hard again and then you stop. So they're not little, right? They're long periods of time. They're maybe two hours, three hours, but then you stop. And so you, so this right here creates the resistance. The resistance is something that you have to break, and you have to break it every day. You can't break it once, once and for all, and it's never going to bother you again. Uh, Stephen, what's his name? I forgot the guy who wrote uh, the book of uh, the War on Art. I think it's called the War on Art, something like that. Anyways, I knew this shit before I read that book because I had already experienced this. The way to break this resistance is to work like this. But most people don't know that. Most people don't have it in them to do that. And then there'll come a point where you can stop, right? You have to go to sleep or you have to stop or whatever. And then the next day you do it, you do the same thing again. And then you start discovering all the things that you love about what you do, your style, you start discovering everything. And the, the, the only reason that really happens is because there's a, there's resistance happening. You're not even aware of it. Most people are not even aware of it. It's not that you need more time. It's that you need to be fully there where you are for long periods of time. You need to fully be there for long periods of time. You can't, you can't be there for long periods of time and not start experiencing being fully there. It's automatic. So this is why I tell you that, that it, it's, it's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a mind fuck. It's a, it's a trick, right? It's like a trick. Because you'll, you'll more, more, most likely, most artists is what they try to do. You'll, you'll try to find out what good music to listen to to put you in the right mood, or, or you're gonna try to pray it off, or you're gonna try to walk it off. Uh, you know, you're not gonna feel inspired and this and that. And, and the reality is that you haven't been there for long periods of time. You need to be there for long periods of time. be there not not show up and then stop you have to be there
anyways, that's my uh, two cents on that. I hope they serve an artist out there somewhere. Um, even knowing this knowledge doesn't mean that, that you're off the hook. Um, I'll be the first one to tell you this. Knowing the knowledge does, does not get you off the hook. It's practicing it. Practicing it gets you off the hook. Uh, so you might know this and you, and you can still experience horrible moments of, of not feeling enough or not feeling that your painting is good enough or feeling like you don't have ideas, you're not inspired. And this, this happens because you're not practicing. You, you might have the knowledge, but you're not practicing it. You're not showing up to the studio. Um, not, e not enough days, it, enough time, enough periods of time where you are actually... Because what needs to happen is that you need to drop the resistance. And so a couple of hours a day is not going to drop the resistance. You know? This is not like exercising where you start running and all of a sudden, oh, okay, I remember why, why I love running. This this will take this will take a little bit of time. Check it out. Thank you so much. Yeah, these are these are my uh, kick-ass brush strokes. <laughs> it's like a little dance, right? The brush strokes may happen like a little dance. There's something I really love about painting. Um, and you start figuring out why you love painting once you start when you once you start painting for again for for uh, a good period of time you start you start remembering why you love it. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to you as an artist is that painting becomes a chore. Uh, you won't like it, you won't create good art. You'll create crappy art, and people around you will notice it. The people that buy or, or exhibit it, they will notice it. And so you have to go from, from art being a chore to, to... I'm talking to the people who do this for a living or who do this every day. Okay? Uh, Joe Suaza says, you taught me how to basically paint freely. I love that. Thank you so much. I feel like a seafood now. I love that. And so that's what the resistance is, guys. Um, you won't get it until you make it a practice. And usually, right, people don't get it. Like you might be listening to me and saying, oh, I get it. But if you don't turn it into a practice, you're going to be suckered by it over and over. Okay. Uh, I've, learned to understand, I've, I've learned to understand that, that an artist is a worker. Okay. You, by nature, if you're an artist, you're a worker. And unless you put in the work, you're not going to see the, the fruit. Many of us want to see the fruit without putting in the work. And, and, and so that's when all, all kinds of shit start going really weird. If you don't put in the work, guys. You, you got you to gotta put in the work. Absolutely put in the work. You'll start experiencing all kinds of weird shit if you don't put in the work. In your career and in your artwork. 
people start experiencing weird, weird, weird things when you don't put in the work. So I think that's about it. I think that's a, that's a good piece right there. Do you plan on your color palettes? Is, uh, Jennifer, uh, God's, Jennifer God's Hawk. Uh, I, I really don't. Uh, let me show you. So I didn't pre-mix anything. I just have my colors. I have I have uh, uh, ti no, this is not titanium. I always say titanium because I used to use titanium a lot. Uh, this is soft mixing white. This is stalo blue. This is viridian. Okay. This is uh, just yellow, just pale yellow. This is these are cads. This red is a cad too. This is uh, dioxin purple, and uh, this is magenta, and this is Mars black. Okay, but I don't plan the colors. I just, you know, I just use a fairly limited palette, except for these two babies right here. You know, these two, I, I just, I really like them, just because I like bright colors. So, I like very intense colors. Uh, I don't paint, even though I have bright colors. I don't paint very bright or intense. Many of my, many of my collectors know me as, as even being a painting a bit muddy, right? And there's a reason for that, because I like using these colors. If you just use bright colors, your paintings are going to look like, like, I don't know, like whatever you want them to look like. I don't like it. They just, they're going to look just bright. I don't want them just to look bright. I, I want them to have a contrast. I want it to be, you know, you, you, can, you can only drink water if you're thirsty, right? There needs to be contrast. You can't drink water and be like, oh my God, my, my stomach's so full. I'm gonna go drink some water. No, you need to be thirsty, right? So, so I need to have some, some, some muddy brown, dark, uh, grays. I need to have all those colors, right? And then I can have some very bright oranges and you know, very bright blues in there. It's oil. It's not acrylic. It's oil. Look at that. Let's give it some space. With the space, baby, it comes together, of course, because it's uh, it's fairly impressionistic, somewhat somewhat expressionist, of course. But it's there's some. I the first style that I learned how to paint was impressionism. So so I always kind of go back to it a little bit, right? Even though I paint ex with uh, with an expressionist uh, brushstroke, I, I go back to my impressionistic roots. Look at that from time to time it just kind of shows in the paintings so all right guys i hope that you enjoy this little segment right here with me uh this painting will be available up for auction click on the link in this profile my profile to go check out my auctions the auctions start at 99 cents for this paintings it's a uh, it's a really really cool deal uh, also i'm still running the special for the for the commissions Usually a commission this size is $1,200, $1,500 framed. But I'm running a commission special right now where you can get it, rather than $1,200, you can get it for $250. So I'll paint whatever you want me to paint for you for uh, on a 16 by 20 inches oil and canvas uh, for $250, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. So DM me, send me a message if you want a painting. Uh, it is a little bit limited with timing because uh, because I, I do get a lot of them and I have to I have to finish them and as you, as you see uh, um, well people people want different things so it's not like I'm just gonna paint flowers right some people want portraits some people want the puppy portraits and on and on and on so um, jump in before it's too late all right take care guys peace